Okay, let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to attend my talk. I am Lu Ningsun, a third year PhD student from Professor Jian Xunwang's research group at the University of Notre Dame. Today, I will present our recent progress on physics constraint deep learning for surrogate modeling of fluid flows on irregular domain. Firstly, I will talk about pump-wise formulation of physics-informed deep learning using fully connected neural networks. Secondly, I will introduce our novel geometry adaptive physics informed convolutional neural network for circuit modeling of fluid flows. Our new framework has a better performance compared to the fully connected PNN in terms of accuracy and efficiency, and it is suitable for problems with irregular domain and high parameter space. Firstly, let me introduce some background and motivations of our research. We all know that the classical numerical method is well developed to solve complex physics problems. Then why would we bother to develop the circuit modeling? The main reason is that the traditional software is time-consuming and expensive. When it comes to the real-time of many query applications, conduct traditional numerical simulation becomes infeasible. For example, in uncertainty quantification, we have to evaluate the model for thousands of times or even more. There is no way we can afford simulations that take weeks or days for each single run. For the sake of computing efficiency and adapting to more practical cases, we are motivated to develop the circuit modeling. Traditional circuit models such as Gaussian process, the polynomial chaos, chaos extension, fail to handle strong nonlinearity and high dimensionality. Recently, the fast development of deep learning provides a promising way to develop powerful circuit models. In this project, we will explore the potential of deep neural networks for fluid circuit modeling. In deep learning community, when training a deep learning model, it is always assumed that we have sufficient labeled data. Therefore, it is straightforward to feed a large data set to train the neural network by minimizing the data misfeed. However, for scientific problems, the high fidelity data are usually very expensive to obtain since they are either from CFD simulations or experiments. Therefore, we need to train the network with little or even without any label data. Luckily, in most situations, the governing PDE for physics system is already known. Therefore, we can leverage these physical laws to train the deep learning model in small data regimes and then enjoy enjoy the fast online evaluation speed. This is the idea of physics-informed or physics-constrained learning. Well, we, instead of only minimizing the data misfit, we also penalize the violation of the governing equation. We developed this physics-informed neural network for circuit fluid modeling, where the input layer takes the spatial temporal coordinates and variable parameters including the boundary condition, geometry, mechanical properties, and etc. With a number of hidden layers, it outputs solution variables like the flow velocity and the pressure. Instead of imposing the boundary condition as penalty terms, here we modify the output layer by encoding the boundary in a hard manner, namely the initial and boundary conditions will be automatically satisfied by construction. The training will be constrained or even driven by the Navier-Stokes equations, then here comes our second innovation points when we formulate the physics-informed learning. That is, we developed a Bayesian framework to train the network in a probabilistic way. Therefore, if the sparse data has measurement noises or the physical model is not perfect, we are able to consider this uncertainty in the neural network prediction from Bayesian point of view. Specifically, a physics-informed likelihood function is constructed and the posterior of neural network parameters are approximated using a non-parametric variational inference approach by mi minimizing the stain discrepancy. The technical detail will be skipped, but in high level, it is like the Markov chain Monte Carlo method, but requires far less particles to estimate the mean and the variance. Here. I would like to show you some results. Let's consider the blood flow in idealized stenosis, and we want to build the circuit, which takes different stenosis geometries as the input, and then rapidly predict corresponding flow solutions, like velocity and pressures. In these cases, we didn't use any data to train the neural network, and so this is like to use neural network to solve the parametric Navier-Stokes equations with the given boundary conditions. 
these blocks are a result of velocity field and pressures predictions compared with the CFD reference. In each individual block, the first row is the CFD reference and the second row shows the neural network result prediction. We can see that for both velocity components, the contours of all the different stenosis geometries agree with the CFD benchmark cases very well. And the nonlinear pressure drop can also be accurately captured. Remember here, the CFD is only used for comparison and we didn't use any CFD data for training. With such a fast DNN-based simulator, we can do a lot of things that involves large number of model evaluations. For example, we can easily propagate tons of Monte Carlo samples in a second for quantifying the uncertainty from the vessel geometries and other blood properties like the viscosity. The left figure shows the viscosity uncertainty and the quantity of interest is center velocity. The blue solid line indicates the CFD result and the red dot line shows the DNN result. By direct inspection, we can find the two curves align with each other very well. The red figure shows the geometric uncertainty and quantity of interest is the minimum wall shear stress. We can see there is some slight discrepancy between the surrogate and the CFD predictions, but just a kind of reminder that to get the accurate blue curve, we need to run enormous expensive forward simulations. However, once the surrogate is trained, we can get the right dotted line almost immediately. Therefore, it will be a trade-off between the accuracy and cost here, like any other surrogate. The wall shear stress is very important in clinical diagnosis because it is a good indicator for the vessel disease. Therefore, fast and accurately evaluate this property has big market value. Although to get the previous result uh, doesn't need any data, our framework is still compatible with data. Accur actually, incorporating sparse data will help us get more accurate training results. Suppose a real situation in medical imaging. The doctor can only have some sparse measurement from MRI scan, but need to reconstruct the flow field. If he or she just uses the sparse data, the result will be like the second figure. In the third figure, we can find that with the addition of the simple divergence-free law, the flow fluid looks more smooth and physical. Lastly, if we incorporate the accurate model Neville-Stokes equation to the framework, we can reconstruct the flow field from sparse measurement data with high accuracy. In the following slides, I will show you how does the sparse data actually help in the physics-constrained deep learning. The left figure is the training learning curve for the velocity and the right curve is the uh, learning curve for pressure. The blue one is data-free PDE constraint learning while the red one is sparse data plus physics constraint learning. It is clear that the same number of epochs, with the same number of epochs, the training error is more than an order of magnitude lower when sparse data are incorporated. In short, the sparse data together with physics constraint learning can help the model to get more accurate results and accelerate the physics constraint learning than the data-free learning scenario. Uh, to sum up, the fully connected neural network can directly leverage the automatic differentiation, enabling the accurate derivatives computation. It is a very general framework for system. However, it is not very efficient and might not be scalable to complex problems especially for the high dimensional problems. As an alternative, the convolutional neural networks usually need orders of magnitude fewer parameters because of parameters sharing their filter-based convolution operations, which is thus well positioned for large scale and high dimensional problems. Here shows our physics constraint CNNs for fluid modeling in this framework. The input is the spatial coordinate and the parameters, while the output are spatial fields of UVP, respectively. The result shows that it can actually learn the flow field with a high accuracy without using data. Especially in the red figures, we can find that the streamline can be accurately captured and almost identical to the CFD cases. Although the CNN is more efficient and shows great potentials on dealing large-scale physical problems, the classic CNN has notable limitations. 
CNN was originally developed for image recognition, where the convolution filters are designed for images or image-like data. Therefore, the classic CNNs are not directly applicable for problems with irregular domain and non-uniform meshes, since the Euclidean distance-based convolution filters are no longer invariant on non-uniform meshes. Therefore, the biggest challenges of using CNN is to handle problems with irregular geometries. Generally, the common solution is rasterization by representing the geometry by binaries or sign distance function. This treating is straightforward. However, it brings a lot of issues and fails to work for physics-informed learning. For example, it will generate zigzag boundary, being impossible to impose boundary conditions. The training is easily trapped into the bad local minima, and it has low efficiency and high cost. The biggest cons is it is not differentiable because it is a piecewise function. Therefore, limiting the use of geometric optimization and, and design purpose. And uh, all the existing works on physics from CNN only have demonstrated on rectangular geometry with uniform meshes. However, in many practical applications, the geometry is way complex than a rectangular domain, and then they need non-uniform grids all the time. So how can we still leverage the CNN for these problems with irregular geometries and non-uniform grids? To solve these problems, we propose a novel physics-informed geometry adaptive CNN framework. We call it FIGUNET which enables CNN-based physical constraint learning on irregular geometries with non-uniform meshes. The key idea is to encode the elliptic coordinate transformation into the CNN architecture, where the input is from irregular physical domain, but the solution is solved on the regular reference domain. Therefore, after this one-on-one -on -one coordinate mapping, we can use powerful classic CNN backbone to solve the problems. However, in most cases, the analytical form of the one-on-one -on -one mapping is not available for arbitrary geometries. Therefore, we turn to obtain the coordinate mapping numerically by solving a boundary value problem as the boundary are given in both physical and reference domain. The equation on the left is the boundary value equation for the inverse mapping, and the equation on the right is for the forward mapping. I will skip the proof here, saying these two are equivalent. Once the equation on the right-hand side is solved, we will find a deterministic one-to-one -one mapping for each grid nodes, and no aliasing errors is introduced during this process. The elliptic equations can be pre-computed, and it will not add any cost for neural network training. And now, to involve the physics constraint learning in the reference domain, the original PDEs defined in the physical domain has to be recast as the form in the reference domain. We can convert the differential operator from physical domain to the reference domain using the elliptic mapping we just got. With this conversion done, we can solve PDE-based optimization problem defined on reference domain. Similarly to what I mentioned previously, the boundary conditions are encoded into the network in a hard manner. To sum up, by introducing the mapping, we can define loss on irregular domain, but actually solving the PDEs on irregular domain. Again, a FIGUNET can learn the parametric solution without any data. In the next few slides, I will show you some amazing results using FIGUNET to deal with the irregular geometries and the PDEs with high dimensional parameter space. Okay. Firstly, I would like to show you uh, show you uh, the result using FIGUNET to solve heat equations on an irregular Batman shaped domain. The left figure is the network prediction and the right one is the reference. Although the geometry is very irregular, the FIGUNET is still capable of accurately capture the solution. In the second case, we apply the FIGUNET to solve the Navier-Stokes equation within patient-specific vascular domain. The first and second column shows velocity predictions of FIGUNET and CFD reference. The third and fourth column show the comparison of pressures. Both the velocity and pressure agree very well with the CFD reference. Here, if we look at the pressure prediction carefully, we can find that 
the video net can predict the pressure in the corners accurately, which is very hard to achieve using fully connected uh, physics informed neural networks. In the third case, we use the video net to learn the Navier Stokes equation with varying geometries. This time, the geometry is actually the input of the network. By varying the geometry from diverging converging channels to converging diverging channels, all the flow solutions, including velocity and pressure, can be learned without any labeled data. Lastly, we use the feed unit to learn the solutions of Poisson equation with spatially varying source terms. This is a high dimensional case. We use Gaussian random field to represent the right hand side source term, which is expressed by KL expansion truncated by 20 KL modes. So even the intrinsic dimension is very high. Here, we just show you the predictions on a bunch of random selected samples in the high dimensional cases, the high dimensional space. You can see that even in such a high dimensional space, all the solution fields can be actually predicted and it agrees very well with the reference norm, but reference result. Again, no data is used for training. To sum up, in this talk, we discussed many aspects of physics constraint deep learning for fluid circuit modeling and showed you some interesting findings. If you are interested in these works, please check out our recent publications on this topic. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>